Okay, Darlene, I'm going to make you co-host. All right. Hi, everybody. And okay, so I'm going to start off with a few announcements. So welcome. So happy to see you guys here today for number three of our wow calls, which I happen to love. I would love to see your cute faces, Steph and Stella, Kelly. Um, I find that it's an energetic exchange when we can see each other face to face, you know, modern technology kind of takes a little bit of intimacy out of our relationships. And so I love how on the vibe tribe calls, how, you know, that's a mandatory thing. Um, I don't like rules, so I don't like mandatory things from myself personally, but I still want to encourage you to show me your cute face. Okay. Um, cause I think that we're just better received when we can see each other. Mm -hmm. And I do know that Ron, you know, he didn't show his face on calls for like a year. And then finally he figured out how, and it wasn't cause he didn't want to, it's just that he didn't know how. And so he finally figured out how and um, now I feel like his members are so happy to be able to see him. Mm -hmm. And then that way we can see expressions and just connect energetically because everything's frequency, right? <laughs> okay. I think I got everybody's last names removed. I'm going to need a co-host to help me do this stuff. <laughs> okay. So first off, whoever has the dog, can you guys meet yourself, please? Yeah. How, yeah. How do I do that? <laughs> I'm going to mute everybody. Answer. Hold on one second. Oh, I got it. Okay. Um, Darlene, unmute, please. Okay. So just quick announcements and then Darlene's going to go ahead and hit it. So a reminder to, um, to, if you did your homework. Okay. So last week we had a homework assignment of well, first week we had vision statement and now Cynthia is really seeing the power of that vision statement. And so I want to encourage everyone, if you haven't done it, it's never too late. All right. So create your vision as if it's a year from now in present tense, reading it morning and night. And um, then your subconscious mind will create a reality with it for you. It's a manifestation reality. And second is the, the lymphatic drainage techniques. If you just did one thing and started applying it, then that's a new healthy habit. So what I did was I got my old rebounder out of the garage. I made a video to demo Dr. Gloria's technique for you um, because I couldn't find one on it. She also reminded me that you can do both heels at once instead of like the kind of pedaling motion, you can do both at once. So um that's a possibility. And I also got my dry brush and put it right by my shower so that as the water's warming up, I'm just doing the brushing and then I'm making the tea. Now I was already making a clove tea. So I decided to combine them. So I'm putting the cleavers leaf tea inside with the cloves and it actually tastes amazing. So I do recommend that. But if we like the goal with these calls is just to institute healthy habits until they become second nature. And so I also wanted to tell you that I went through all of your jot forms, all of your goals, and I recorded a video with tips to help you achieve those goals. And I also did a mobility workout and I did an upper body training workout. I have not done the yoga one yet and I have not done the cardio because I broke my toe. <laughs> and um, so I can't really do any bouncing so I may just do a low impact cardio, but, um, so, and I can't do the yoga really well because I can't like flex my toes. Um, and it's crooked. So my chiropractor this morning straightened it out for me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, so anyway, just wanted to give you like a little report on that. So anyway, um, does anybody have any comments or anything that you guys want to say before we kick it off or shall we just let Darlene take the floor? If you have something you want to add, go ahead. Okay. Um, who is that? Raise Lori. your hand, you guys. Lori. I bought some of the cleavers tea and it came in a big uh, pound bag. Um, and I just stored it in baggie. Is that what I should do? I didn't know what to do because it's a lot. Yeah, that's For fine. That would be fine. I just kept it in the big bag and shoved it in a drawer. Oh, okay. Um, 
So and I not- add two tablespoons. Oh, Dr. Gloria said she wants to say something. You're muted. Dr. Gloria, you're muted. Um, the one thing that I found out because I'm in Texas now versus Idaho, like I was where the climate is very dry, is that it gets moldy. If you don't mm-hmm. put it like in a, I, I bought those big gallon pickle jars oh. and I put it in there when I get it in those big, big bags. So don't leave it in plastic because if you're in a humid climate, it's going to get moldy. It's raw herbs mm-hmm. that have been cut and sifted. Oh, that's good advice. Thank so you. What about freezing and, it? Can you freeze yeah, it? And if you have, if you look on Amazon, one of my patients gave me a great clue. There's little packets that you can buy that, that take out the moisture. You know how you get in different foods and in supplements and things. You can actually buy them and they're renewable. After about three months, you put them in your microwave and they regenerate again. So you never have to buy them again. So I have one in each of the gallon jars. So be careful with the mold. Perfect. That's a great advice. You guys, we have so many people that are just so valuable. I swear this community is like, I love how Cynthia says that we're all one big jigsaw puzzle Mm -hmm. and everybody has their perfect piece. And without one of our pieces, we don't have, you know, the perfect puzzle. So, okay, let's get going with Darlene. Hold on. Let me say multiple participants can share. Okay my friend. So I know everybody does knows Darlene. And so I don't need to do a big intro for her, but she is the reason that I'm here because day after day, she was sending me videos and telling me about QHS. And I was like, no, 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 no. And because I get hit up all the time. And so finally I'm like, okay, I'm going to listen to her. I didn't know her yet. And I swear, like I listened to a video she sent me and I literally signed up that day. So I owe so much to Darlene. I love her so much and she's just has so much wisdom. So today Uh, she's going to, we're going to talk about gut health. Okay. Well, thank you, Tracy. (laughs) And this is this, you, you've been a great support for this QHS too, because all these little tips and all these health advices, I can't really do. I'm I'm not good at that. <laughs> I'm good with one-to-one, but as a general rule, I, I just basically work with people personally. I, you know, so what Tracy's doing is really putting that information out there where we can have more support. So Thank I'm going to- I'm going to share my screen and let's see here. Uh, wait, hold on. Let me present. You got enough tabs open? <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh, I thought mine was bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put it on screen. Okay, here we go. So gut talk, anyone? Anybody want to talk? I guess that's why you guys are all here and I appreciate you coming and listening to how you can help with your inflammation and what inflammation is and the causes and long-termly how inflammation in our bodies persist and what we can do about it. So when I talk about fire in the belly, we're going to talk about quenching out the fire and creating a better environment. So what causes inflammation? Now, the number one is food allergies. And what we eat is what determines who we are because food allergies are triggers. They create an allergic reaction. They cause an inflammation reaction. And they also register to the stomach what the stomach is having to fight all the time. And then we have the chemical sensitivities, our cleaning products. And number three, obesity. Now, a lot of times we carry a lot of extra weight around our waist. And that holds that holds toxins in the body. So, you know, there was an incident where back when people were losing weight, pretty quickly, what happened there was, you know, let's say these people, you know, they were LSD. And as they lost weight, they started tripping because the toxins were still carried into the tissue. And so that's why we're going to go over it. Why, you know, when you detox, you want to do it slowly, you want to do it easily, but you don't want to do it aggressively. And so we know that the toxins 
are embedded in our tissues. Now, sleep deprivation is another one. I claim that to be number one, because if you don't sleep, you don't repair your cells. And electric magnetic fields, and the, you know, we know what those are, our cell phones are what's contributing to our, um, wait, hold on here, sorry, <laughs> it won't go back. Oh. I'm having a failure problem here. here. Try your arrows on your keep on yeah. your keypad. It won't go back, go on. So while you're fussing with that, I wanted to talk about the difference between a food allergy and a food sensitivity. So a food allergy is an instant response. And typically like you would see peanut allergies or like my dad was allergic to seafood and it, it often has an anaphylactic response where you like, you can't breathe or things like that. Now a food sensitivity is more of a delayed reaction and it's an inflammation and typically you'll see it like in the gut. Now, my husband, he has a problem with cucumbers and he gets this itchy mouth. So that to me is more of an allergy than a sensitivity. So, but the problem is, is that the sensitivities actually create um, a problem because they create gut permeability, which is when your junctions in your gut open up and undigested food particles leak out. So you have to be really careful because everybody's sensitivities are, and allergies are different. Okay, you ready? Go ahead. You're on EMFs. Okay. I was on the electric magnetic fields. And now sugar, sugar is, a, you know, it's a cancer feeder. And it also helped. I mean, it really contributes to a lot of inflammation in our gut, in our stomachs. Now, insulin resistance, we know, I mean, staying away from high glycemic foods is the key your heavy metal poisons, your prescription drugs. Uh, same with uh, people who have had amalgams pulled out of their mouth. They still leak mercury and it's still in their system. So a lot of times we have people that say, oh, I, I got rid of all my metals. No, they're still in there. So when they're having these symptoms and stealth pathogens, we call those, those are smoldering viruses. They they linger, they, you know, they cause a lot of problems. And that's what I see a lot with stomach and liver issues when I pick up high inflammation in those areas. So here are symptoms, you know, we can go on and on about symptoms, you know, asthma, eczema, you know, sinusitis, your gas, abdominal, um, lack of energy, I mean, I, we could go on and anxiety, depression, that's where your, you know, your stomach is your second brain. So everything we do, what goes in our mouth, assimilation, digestion, and elimination, that's the process I'm taking you through today. And it goes through, you know, Edgar Casey always pointed that out. <laughs> and so when you've got dizziness, I will tell you, I was working and I kept having these dizzy spells. I was having like where I felt like I was having a heart attack. You know, I had these symptoms. Well, it was all related to gallbladder. So these are things are warnings and we want this. This is an inflammation marker here and it's telling us something's going on in our body. But when it's long termly, you know, it can lead, you know, it can lead to a lot of different problems here. So here we found that long-term inflammation leads to Alzheimer's, diabetes, stroke, cancer, Parkinson's disease, arthritis, autism. And, you know, with this going on, we don't want to wait till this is happening. But if you've been diagnosed with these problems, please look at your inflammation and what's going on in your stomach for now. And I know we have this, you know, the QT twine device, we have this panacea, you know, journey that we're going to be on. But right now it's what matters is, is now is how we feel now. And do we want to get into this situation? Do we want to get into a danger zone? And so a lot of times when you have these certain attacks, they attack certain areas, they're what we call the shock organs. 
So, you know, when you have your nose, you have hay fever in your lungs, but mainly today we're going to talk about the bowel because the bowel system and, and the way we need to eliminate and the way to get toxins out of the system, because as we wear this QT twine device, it's giving us the frequencies to devitalize pathogens, but what we can do, you know, anything we can do that's going to be better and better our system is going to enhance the device to work more efficiently. Anything we do in a bad way or <laughs> it's not going to, it's going to enhance the bad habits. So, so what causes inflammation in our stomach? And I pretty much, I know I made a list of nine things that contribute, but right now, the, the main thing I see is our foods, our foods, what we eat. And we, we always, I mean, these are comfort foods to me. <laughs> I know I love my coffee, you know, once in a while I like to have a drink and we have sugar, you know, we have sugars and everything. We have grains and everything. So, you know, this, okay, what do you eat? Well, there's a lot of things that you can eat, you know, you, your vegetables, your fruits, you know, there's ways of going around the packaged foods and being quick when you order, but mainly our foods. They, and when people get rid of, and they kind of do a diet elimination process, there's some dramatic cures. And I've had to do this on myself. And it really, I mean, you have to have the want to. <laughs> and when you want to, and when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you, you do go about getting rid of these foods out of your life. And then you eventually, you can wean them in and you, you know, anything excessively becomes an allergic reaction, but you know, it's moderation for everything. And then the next thing um, are the pathogens. I, I really concentrate on what is disturbing that person's stomach and, and where, where we need to tackle the detox issues. So, you know, it could be molds, chemicals, heavy metals, parasites, I mean, bacteria, candida, yeast. So when these occur, you know, they're causing a lot of inflammation in the gut. And then we've got the parasites, you know, those, you know, you really know if you're feeling low grade infection, feeling lethargic, you know, you don't feel full of life, I would you know, look into it. And mainly I always recommend someone to, you know, professionally to help you. Um, because when it comes to detoxing, you want to go to a naturopath, you want to go to somebody or a bioscan, an electrical dermal screener like me and do some deep tissue, you know, cleaning. That's what we do with homeopathy and really figure out what it is that you need to address your, your form of detoxation. You know I mean? And to get rid of these issues here. So can I interrupt you really quick? So what you said about if you eat the same things, you're going to develop an allergy. That is so true because I actually was eating eggs every day because I have nine chickens and, you know, it's a really good absorption of uh, protein absorption is eggs. And I had a gut screening test done. It was a stool test and it tested me for gosh, a lot of foods and eggs came up to avoid due to a certain virus. And I, I know that it's probably because I was eating them almost every day. Whereas if I was having them a couple times a week, that virus accumulation creating the sensitivity would not be there. Right, Darlene? Correct. And then a lot of times you can, you know, be off of those foods for a good year or 90 days, and then you can wean them back, but then you'll know, you'll, you'll pretty much know your body will give you a message that it's not working. You'll have a reaction of nasal congestion or a cough or whatever the case may be. But yes, you can, you know, anything to an excess becomes an allergic reaction. So this, these are things I throw out. I mean, as far as change your diet, change your mind. So if we eliminate these foods and we get these types of toxic foods out of our system, you know, uh, it will affect what our brain is in our stomach. We have a second brain in our stomach and I'll go into that, but you know, it's what it's registering. It's like neurotransmitters. It's just like when you eat sugar, you know, it gives off that vasopressin. It's a 
you know, saying, oh, I feel good. <laughs> the so can I, I want to change something here too. So when it says food, you are not allowed to eat. Let me clarify. <laughs> okay. We are not giving medical advice. We are not here to treat or cure disease. We are giving helpful tips to help you. But if you have any any concerns or, you know, we always, like Darlene said, recommend checking with your doctor first. And then when it says you're not allowed to eat, I would like to rephrase that to say foods that are, it's not advised to eat if you are looking to decrease the fire in your belly. <laughs> How's that? That's good. Now, you know, a lot of times about, you know, quenching out the fire, you know, you add probiotics and pre -probi uh, prebiotics in the gut health. And we'll go into detail of that. And then mainly these are just little advice, you know, for metal and liver cleanses, antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So we go into that. And then your uh, essential fatty acids, they're really good about cooling the body down. And we're talking about cold press oils. So however you can work that into your protocol, I put it in my shakes, I put it in my um, fiber, my prebiotic fiber. And, you know, there's ways to get oil in your system. If you can can't, you I'm sorry, can you explain what prebiotic fiber is? It's similar to your uh, guar gum, a psyllium, you know, they're, they're products, they're fibers that congeal. And what that does, it forms a lining, a protective lining in your intrinsic lining of your stomach so that things can't leak out. So that's what we use a lot of times for leaky gut syndrome. And you can find these products, they're, they're, there's a lot of combination products and I'll recommend, you know, there's some in Nature Sunshine and it's called Clean Start. And there's, they're basically fibers that, that work like they fill in the holes. They're, they're, they're insoluble basically. So also we'll they're like probiotics. I always say it's like you're planting all these vegetables in your garden, right? So those are all your different little probiotics and the prebiotics is the fertilizer, good. right? You're putting good bugs, good bacteria back in to your stomach as you detox. And then what you're doing with the prebiotics, you're building the wall. You're building your wall back better. <laughs> so basically what it's doing, it's giving you that protection. And it's just like if you have a boat with holes in it, it's a leaky, it's, it's going through. So you don't want to be detoxing toxins or, you know, chemicals from your body. And then it's going back and it's making the liver work even more. So, and it's like a recycle. So what we want to do is we want to push them out. We want to excrete them. So we go into that. And then here, okay, I had to put this little joke in here. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if anybody's seen this, but what organ is in charge? So when we go through this, we, you know, the brain said I was in charge. I run the body systems and the blood says I should be in charge because I circulate oxygen all over. So without me, you'd waste away. And the stomach says, no, I'm in charge, you know, because I process food and give all of your energy. And the leg said, because I carry the body wherever it needs to go, I should be in charge. And the eyes, I should be in charge because I allow the body to see where it goes. And the rectum says, no, I should be in charge. And I'm responsible for waste removal. Well, all the body parts of the rectum, you know, they, they were all insulted. <laughs> they said, oh, you know, we'll see, you know, so in a few days, he shut it down. The head had a headache. The stomach was bloated. The legs got wobbly. And, you know, water got in the eyes. Blood was toxic. And all they decided was the rectum should be the boss. So the moral <laughs> of the story is the asshole's always in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so That's on that hilarious. note, I was like, okay, what really is important besides the asshole? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what we're saying here is the liver. And I did make the R, I just liver. <laughs> because if your body stays constipated, and I and I witness this all the time, and I talk to people. You know, once we eliminate this issue, they, they do get better. So the elimination 
products contained in the feces, they, if they hold back the fecal matter and the lower parts of the intestinal tract, it leads to a toxic environment. And that's what I'm saying when we fill it in with prebiotics, then we, we're protecting our those toxins from going outside our system and, and going into the bloodstream. And if the situation isn't resolved, you know, it's a chain reaction. We, we our kidneys um, obstruct, we have kidney stones, the urinary bladder, you know, gets inflamed. And then what happens there, you know, you've got prostate cancer, you've got urinary infections, it's an ongoing symptom. So everything that I'm bringing up here is to really look at your problems and what's going on now and how can you help yourself. And that's why we're giving these tips out. And this is what I call leaky gut syndrome. So this is an example of a person that, you know, when I get this kind of reading, the first thing I do is I test for what pathogen is concerning her stomach. What are, what are the main toxins that are contributing to here? And her liver, her gallbladder. So her gallbladder was taking the brunt of the work here. And it, you know, the filtration system, it, it was, you know, that the gallbladder helps the liver. And when the gallbladder breaks down, well, a lot of people get their gallbladder removed, but they're really causing more harm to their liver when they do that. So when I was addressing the deep cleaning, basically you can see down here at the bottom, I didn't show all of them, <laughs> but there was a lot of parasites that came up. There was a lot of other issues, mold and fungus. So it may not be one pathogen, but when you have a lot of pathogens going on, you wanna detoxify, you wanna detoxify slowly and be under a naturopath or a physician that can help you because this, a lot of times, even with metals, when they, when you detox too quickly, and especially with people with a lot of metals, remember our brain, our second brain, it, 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 it knows, and it can cause some, you know, schizophrenia. It can cause a lot of problems. I've seen that happen before. So here we go in and we talk about how to re build a friendly colony of helpful bacteria, even if it's already been damaged of overuse of antibiotics. So if you've been on a lot of prescription drugs, you know, these are things that you might want to consider to, you know, look in and, and really study what probiotics are and what prebiotics are, because they're so helpful and they do calm the stomach down and they do help with inflammation. Now there's foods you can eat. You've got your sauerkraut, your fermented cabbage, and that gives you your probiotics. And then you have chicory root, Jerusalem artichokes for your pre. So these are just fibrous foods. So fiber is your prebiotic. And then your probiotic is, you know, putting good flora back in good. So you, you're taking out bad bugs, but you're feeding the body back the good bugs. And then here's all your miso. When I was in Japan for a month, I was studying Eastern herbal medicine and every day we had miso, <laughs> fermented soybean paste. And it was, I got where I just craved it. And, you know, that gives you bacteria, good bacteria. So if, for people who can't take probiotics, then this would be a way to look at your diet and, and look at all the foods that you can take to help with putting good flora back into your microbiome. Because that is our brain. That is our, you know, how we think. And, and a lot of times when your stomach is inflamed with all these issues, how can we expect our brain to work? You know, so the benefits can are- Can I add something really quick? If you sure. guys want to buy miso or tempeh, which she just was kind of reviewing briefly, uh, make sure it's non-GMO because soy is one of the very high GMO crops. So if you're going to do tempeh or miso, just make sure it's non-GMO. Yeah, they've yeah they've ruined that food, like our grains and corn. Mm -hmm. I know yeah, you have to be real careful about that too. So the benefits of addressing your inflammation in your gut is less allergies, 
You're going to have weight loss. Definitely. I mean, I will tell you, weight will just drop off because you're helping with your metabolism. You're, and also you're eliminating the toxins. So that helps with the breakdown of food and better digestion. And you restore your brain activity. Oh, that's, more energy, better sleep, and less pain. So, and then these are just steps I kind of put out. Now I have reference to Dr. Scott Mumby. I know Ruby's a big fan of Dr. Scott Mumby. Is Ruby here? <laughs> no, he must be good though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's good. He's written a lot of books. I highly uh, go to the YouTube channel on inflammation of everything I talked about. And he goes over each little inflama uh, inflammatory marker. And this is my information. And this is where I've studied. And also he's a big, he wrote um, Beyond Medicine years ago when I started studying electrical dermal screening. And he was all about frequency work. So I'm trying to connect with him on, you know, probably joining with QHS to, you know, be a part of the, Q arc for us. Nice. But here we got the digest enzymes. A lot of times you can get your probiotics with your enzymes together. You want to determine what type of liver cleanse that'll remove the pathogens that are occurring. So seek out a professional or a bioscan tester because the only way you can have a fecal test, but a lot of times those tests don't show parasites because, you know, those they like to embed, they're like your smoldering viruses they get in the tissue so they're they're smart enough and they also leach onto your stomach wall and pull nutrition out of your system and that's why a lot of times when the immune system tests really high on someone with me you know i know something's going on i know that and they're taking vitamins so what is causing them to not absorb those vitamins and then you want to use probiotics to put the good bugs back in and you want to use prebiotics to build the intrinsic lining of the colon and stomach back so leaky gut cannot take place. So remember those steps because they're very important. If you try to detox and you're not putting the fiber back in, you're not putting good flora back in, it's not, it's not going to be beneficial. And so these are things I kind of use. I use a uh, miracle mineral solution, MMS. Um, it kills everything. It kills bacteria, uh, Dr. Humble's version. So we can bring that out if everybody would like to know about that. Easy Act Tea is something you can get. It's been around for years. It's It's got sheep shirelle. It, it's also, it's her name backwards, Cassie. She was nurse Cassie. And she was treating people in Germany and, and curing cancer with this. <laughs> so it's still around. But when you go to Whole Foods or you go to Sprouts, it'll be on the bottom shelf. And you have to really look for it <laughs> because you can't find it. You can't find it. I mean, I have to ask. I mean, every time I go in, it's in a different new location. And this helps kill, you know, helps the liver and it kills parasites and bacteria. And then you've got your omega-3 fish oils for cooling the fire in the belly. Um, this adds, you know, to, I mean, this, if anything, your omega-3s are very important. And antioxidants for free radical scavengers. And, and then I recommend colonics and foot baths, enemas. The reason I recommend these is because a lot of times you're detoxing, but then you want to help the body bring all these this debris out so you know a colonic is irrigation and what it does it goes in there so that way you're constantly assimilating digesting and you're eliminating so it's that whole process back in action here and then when you sweat you want to you know sweat in a calming your you know sympathetic mode so your body can eliminate toxins in a better state and then get out and walk outdoors and be in front of trees. And that's a Prozac. <laughs> you know, they, they were going to make a Prozac out of just, you know, the bacteria from trees. And they were going to, I don't know if they ever did that. I don't know. Dr. Gloria, do you know where they were able to do that? That's a great uh, subject that you brought up. Thank you. No, the FDA stopped them. 
did they? And, and then you're one of the few people I've, I've talked to that actually knew they were going to do that. And they're yeah. taking a lot of natural things that you and I, Darlene, would use off the market now. I don't know if you've heard the latest list, but it's pretty scary. Uh, uh, so a lot of the natural things, including ESEAC, is going to be taken off the market. Oh, FDA is taking all of that out. They've taken some of the natural homeopathic eye drops off the market. I don't want to mention names. So um, yes, they. you're absolutely right. They actually found out, I think this was the study I did way back like 20 years ago. Remember that there was a big thing about it a while ago that they were going to be able to, to somehow use that, that um, what's in the atmosphere, right? The trees. Yes. And, and the bacteria. And from the FDA trees. put a max on it and wouldn't let them do it. It was going to be a nasal spray. It was going to yes. be a nasal spray where it would help with depression. and. You're absolutely you're right. And, and guess what? They can't patent it because it's it's in nature. So they stopped it. So everybody, yeah, walk outdoors. <laughs> yeah, talk walk to, outdoors. Talk She's to, right. <laughs> talk to the trees. So are there any questions? You guys, if you have questions, please raise your hand, okay? Nobody, come on. Okay. How come Can I talk? Yes. Uh, one thing I wanted to to say that that just piggybacks on what Darlene said, and that was great, Darlene, thank you, um, well, is that what I tell my patients, an easy way to remember what a prebiotic is, it's food for the good bacteria. It is nourishment. It's food. Like you said, Tracy, <clears throat> you plant a garden, you've got to fertilize it, right? Right. Well, the pre, the pro the prebiotic is food for the probiotic for the actual microorganisms in our gut. So just remember that 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 pre is food, food for the good bacteria. So if you're doing good probiotics, but you're not eating fiber, like Darlene said, and you're not feeding those good microorganisms, uh, then half of those organisms in the gut are gonna be gone without doing you any benefit, without being able to multiply and give you more and more immunity. So that's that's really important. Remember it's food for the gut. And I find that that is the topic that most people, I mean, trying to educate people about that mm -hmm. and how important it is to add those to your, your nutritional reg regime here. Right. And what you touched on about the sauerkraut, you know, and all that for the probiotics. Um, people in ancient cultures and in Eastern Europe, especially where I've done a lot of work and research, they never take probiotics that they buy as a supplement. Exactly what Darlene said. I mean, I pickle my, my onions. I pickle cucumbers. It's so easy to make a brine, put it in a jar and let it sit for a couple of days. So the list that she had is very important. You can take probiotics, yes, I do, every day. But I also take my food that's fermented because that fermented food is your probiotic as well. Mm -hmm. So you're just doing yourself a favor and making everything that you eat tastier too, assuming you love onions like I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you only leave it on your shelf for two days? Two days, um, two or three days, and then it has to be refrigerated. Okay. Thank you for saying that. I found a recipe for fermenting, for fermenting carrots and I did carrots and I did, I can't remember what else. And it got super moldy, but the recipes, I thought it said three weeks. It does. It's <laughs> so I, you're right. A lot of them do. Those and, are fermented. <laughs> yeah. I learned the hard way. <laughs> it was fermented. All right. I oh gosh. I, and I had to throw it away. So I leave it for two days in a, a cool room, not hot, like on top of my washer and dryer. As long as I'm not doing laundry, it's fine. And then refrigerate it. And okay. it'll be good for a couple of months. My red onions in my vinegar brine last about, well, assuming that we don't eat them all before, they last a good six weeks and they're fine. So vinegar, if you add vinegar, then I thought that that wasn't naturally fermented because of the vinegar or it is, is it? It is naturally fermented. That's how they used to ferment in the old days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Salt um, and vinegar, remember, are the preservatives. Oh. But if you're in an area like I am, and you're not careful, you're going to get mold in everything. Uh, yes. I'm going to tell you something quick, Darlene. I had a I had a patient that was concerned about um, some of the mold. You were talking about the, the toxins that you found, that you find in the scans. And um, I baked some muffins, some all healthy muffins yesterday, and I got busy. And I was going to let them cool in the tin 
and then go back and take them out. Went to take one out this morning. It was totally black on the bottom. So I freaked out. All of them were black and white on the bottom from the mold from just being overnight sitting in the tins. So be careful because darling, think can spot where you have mold, where you have all of those toxins, but people don't think about it. They don't realize that they're hurting. Oh, and, and all also of a sudden, they've got fibromyalgia symptoms and everything else. Right, darling? Right. And also that report I showed you was a person, her, you know, she's been on the device for about a, a year and a half, but why, you know, now her body's going back to a condition where it's showing more inflammation, well, inflammatory issues. And so basically hers was mold from a home that she was working in. So and your me, home, your environment, yes, mm -hmm. all that needs to be taken. I, I want to share it. something, if I may, real quick about a patient I just had as well. A young lady that's 14 that has a lot of allergies anyway. She doesn't have a real good immune system. She ended up in emergency and they called me. And they said she's she's been exposed to toxic mold. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, that's black mold. Your house isn't moldy. What's going on? They couldn't figure it out. And finally, her older sister took the plastic straw that's in her zipper bottle, like my zipper bottle here. If you can see it. I don't think it'll show. Uh, but I mean, you know, you've got the straw that is in there. And I used the little brush to clean it. Well, this young lady never cleaned her straw for weeks. Oh. And she ended up in the hospital with double pneumonia from the actual mold in her straw. So uh -huh. mold is very invasive and don't, don't uh, take it lightly. It's very important that you understand that even a muffin overnight can have mold. If I would have picked it up and started eating it and not looked at the bottom, I would have had mold. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That's why I drink out of jars. <laughs> I, I but like also, my bottles, but, but I clean the straws. <laughs> if you guys, I also put my straw, I have a hydro flask that I take to the gym and I put the straw in the dishwasher so it sanitizes it. So that's also something recommended. Okay, let's take our questions for now and then we'll see what else comes up. Christy, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, ladies. Um, I was just wondering what you recommend as a colonic. Is there a brand that you recommend or is it just a, a home mixture? No, you have to find a professional in your area. So mm. Darlene said this to me about a month ago. And so I looked up just, you know, colonic or colon irrigation or something like that. And I found one. It's so cute. Her name is the root chakra. And <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I went to her. And then she said, I recommend coming back a couple of times. And I just so happened to have started a parasite cleanse like the day or two before. And man, mm, it was really? eye-opening. Not to gross anybody out, but it was eye-opening. So um, yeah, so you have to do that professionally. And Darlene, oh, okay. can you explain to her about the open and closed? Oh. Well, your your open one is is kind of a it's not as aggressive, but it works for like people who are just trying it. But a lot of people don't have open ones. You're usually able to find closed ones. And basically that you just lay on a table flat and there's, you know, it irrigates you and then it pushes the debris out. So a lot of times we can hold 10 to 15 pounds in our guts and not know. Wow. That. And these are things that people don't understand. And also, you know, if you're having two to three bowel movements a day, you still, you know, once a month, I, I go and I'm surprised of what, you know, happens. <laughs> so, you know, it's not that, it's not that, it's just that if you can eliminate and help the liver and help the cleanse, that that's part of the protocol that I follow and that's been working. So, and I find that the numbers, the inflammation decreases when people increase their elimination process, not just by detoxifying, but also, you know, they do their own, well, you can do enemas, you can order enema kits if you want to do that. And that's another process. So, Let's talk and about also, that too, because coffee enemas are like really, really great for liver detoxification and they use it at the Gerson therapy clinic in Mexico. I actually interviewed the primary doctor from Gerson. So that's a cancer treatment place and they use yeah, coffee and medicine juicing. Yeah. They use the, the green bean coffee. They don't use yeah. like coffee 
what we drink. <laughs> it's yeah. a different, and you can order that through Amazon and you can, you know, try it yourself. And then also you can, when you do enemas, you can, you know, I, I use like, if I know that I'm parasitical and things are happening, I'll put MMS in my enema and, you know, you mm. can add things to your water, but do it slowly and not aggressively. That's the, that's the key. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Arison. You got to unmute. Unmute, Sonny. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, I've been reading quite a bit on parasites and says we can get parasites through our animals. Uh, wondering how to actually kill the parasites and get them out of our system to, to where we would feel better. Uh, I know wormwood will, uh, advantage will. Is there anything else that would uh, help on that situation? And two, our pancreas, is there anything in particular that would help our pancreas in any type of uh, herbs or like cinnamon, uh, trying to think of something else, but uh, anyway, those are the two questions. Well, yeah, parasites you can get from your animals and also our food, uh, especially, you know, vegetables, you know, raspberries, strawberries, you know, have been reported, you know, with the bacteria that caused a lot of people to be sick. So that, I mean, there's a lot of ways we can contract parasites it's just and I contracted mine in China I was you know eating fish and I came back and I had a really bad condition and a lot of times you can carry the host and if that host keeps in the body and you don't kill it then it produces eggs so it's one thing after another there now as far as your pancreas you know your sugar and Looking at your sugar levels, chromium, things like that, you can add egg yolks. So those are things you can contribute. And also you've got MMS. That that takes care of it. Oh yeah, I've got that. Yeah. 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 Sonny's a longtime uh client of mine back in Nashville. So I was working with him for quite a while. He's a good friend of mine too. <laughs> That's awesome. He's the one, seriously, Arison, remember when we were talking and you recommended me do something like this a week, every week? It was yes, your big idea. So thank you. <laughs> I You're got awesome. you into the job. <laughs> it's okay. I'm waiting for everyone to schedule appointments. I seem to be at a lull right now. So I'm waiting for the next round of members to get devices so that they can schedule with me. Okay. Are you good to go? Is your question answered? Yes, ma'am. All right, my dear. Thank you. Kathy. Hi. Hey, Hello. Darlene. How you doing? Oh, good. How are you, Kathy? I'm good. I had a nice chat with Darlene last week. She went over some of my results. But the question I had is we discussed somebody in my area that I could maybe see personally. And you said her name was Shelly or Sherry something. Can you oh, give me her, yes, her last so I... name? Yeah, from Chicago, from Illinois. Yes, um, Sherry. Uh, I'll have to let me send you the information for her. I, okay. I forgot to send you that. I'm yeah, because she's really close to me, also, and and I would like to like maybe get my allergies checked out because, like I said, everybody keeps saying I have allergies, but I've never been tested for any. Nobody ever tested me because they said I can't be tested because I don't have because I'm taking blood pressure medicine. They said you can't be tested while you're taking blood pressure medicine. So every time I would ask, they would say no. And so I have never been tested, but I know I've got, you even saw them on my test results that I have a lot of allergies. So I need, I need to see somebody personally about that. She, I tested her samples this time where we're, I'm going with the hair samples, the urine, the toenails and the hair. And so what I'm doing is I'm picking up more issues and having a more detailed graph. And this graph is gonna be 
what's going to entail at the you know, when I test you at the QR, so everybody will be getting familiar with, you know, if you're inflamed or if you're in the balance phase. So I, when I picked up allergies on you, you know, I can't go in there and I, I'm not one, I can't with a remote test, I can't go in there personally and say, oh, you have this or you have that. That's right. not what these are for. So when you test with her personally, it's strictly, it's, it's a galvanic skin response according to your meridians and it picks up on what is going on with the algorithm of the software. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. Yeah, if you could, wouldn't mind sending that to me when you get a chance, okay, I'd appreciate I'll be it. Glad to. Okay. That's all awesome. I have. Thanks, Kathy. Okay, Gina. Uh, yes, am I unmuted? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah I was just wondering what y'all thought uh, you're talking about parasites, about using DE, diatomaceous earth, for that, because I, I know I have heard and I have used it, and I've also heard that you can give it to your pet. And of course, it's, it's definitely um, natural, organic. And I'm in an area where they have horse races here, and uh, a lot of people, rather than using wormers and that kind of thing, they feed. Um, the horse is a little bit of the diatomaceous earth because it um, causes you to uh, get rid of of the parasites. And um, anyway, uh, and, and without being, you know, a, a chemical thing that's doing it. So I was wondering what was thought about that. Oh, I, I agree. I feel like that's a very good product to use. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things you can use out there for parasites where it's yeah, not and aggressive. It's not a right. aggressive. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeds, still working on. Yeah, yeah if it working. nourishes the colon and also the intestinal wall. Yeah, and I, I'm still working off of a 50 pound bag that I bought of the stuff, that, the food bread <laughs> um, that. <laughs> I share with, um, you know, because you can also, uh, my, my neighbor down the road powders her chicken coop with it to get rid of the fleas. And wow. you can put it on your mattresses to get rid of bed bugs. And I mean, it's just, it's it's a, yeah, it's amazing stuff. And, um, but yeah, so I, that, that is, I'm, I'm glad to know that y'all are, know about that too because you know I've been hearing about that for years and and I forget about it and I've still got a ton of it and so every now and then I'll you know put it in my breakfast drink and remember to to take that so I need to get make back to sure doing it yeah make sure it doesn't mold like Dr. Gloria said you know put yeah. it in a jar yeah keep yeah. it and also pumpkin seeds are anti-parasitic they don't like those. So eating pumpkin seeds like on your salad every day is really good and they taste great and you can get good omegas from those as well. So I buy the sprouted pumpkin seeds. They're better for you than the unsprouted. Um, so you might want to add those to a salad too. Super simple. Anything else, Gina? Uh, no, that, that was it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Cheryl. I just want to check and see, um, Darlene, I haven't been on any of your tests, uh, but want to find out, is it best to email you to find out someone who's doing what you do in my area? I'm in Portland, Oregon. Yes, you can buy, uh, email me at bioscan okay. at qtwe.net, and okay. I will send you the link to the company that I I use their equipment and they have testers all over the United States. So wherever you are, you can, they'll locate a tester close to you. Great. Okay. And then I also just wanted to ask if any of your presentations going to be available for us uh, downloaded at all. Maybe I, that's can, I can put it in a PowerPoint presentation and then we'll send you, I could send you copies of it. Oh, great. So write you. to me, yeah, write to me at that email and I'll directly send you a PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Thank you, Darlene. You're welcome. 
Awesome. And the recording of this will be posted later on today after I get the version back, then I'll upload it to YouTube and I'll post it in the chat. Okay, Adelita. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask, um, uh, I started spitting out blood from my, from my lungs and I found out that when I had that bone cancer in 1980, they did mm -hmm. radiation and they did it for five, six months. But now, uh, apparently, the doctor says that the bottom part of my right lung is burned and the lung itself opens, but it doesn't close very good. But now, uh, the other day, they called me and said they needed to uh, talk to me because they found something in the lung. And I'm just wondering, if there, is there anything that I can take to kind of make it? You know what, Adelita, that is really beyond the scope of our calls. That is very highly medical. And I don't think it's appropriate for us to give you medical advice on that. Um, I just thought maybe if, if the, maybe I could take some kind of uh, vitamin or something. The no. only thing I know that's good for respiration is mulein tea. M-U-L-L-E-I-N T is good for respiration. I just sent Terry, who, you know, is on admin with us. Um, I sent him a whole article about that. And that is good for breathing. But as far as damage to a lung, that's pretty intense. And I don't think that we're qualified or it's not appropriate for us to discuss something like that. Oh, Okay. You know, that's that's fine. really serious. I would definitely take, you know, go talk to your doctor about that. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, that's okay. I just, you know, you know I what I would do? I would hold your device near that damaged area. Well, that's I'm waiting would... for it. I'm, 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 I'm anxious to get it. Okay. So. Yeah. And I know we all are, we are all anxious for everyone that doesn't have one to have one. And Cynthia said that by middle of October, you know, once we start shipping again, two to three weeks, we'll be caught up and, uh, that'll be a glorious day. <laughs> and this is why well, we're I'm giving, excited. So this is why we're giving tips now, how to be accountable, how to make your body feel good now. And then when you get the device, it'll just enhance everything you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I know over time it, it does help it. It amplifies every good thing you're doing. So it's, a, it's working on a cellular level. And then when you nutritionally get sound and you counteract the inflammation in your stomach, your, this device, it's, it, it just will work even more. So mm -hmm. it's not the panacea of it, but yet we know later down the road, we're gonna be there, but it's how we feel now that matters and what we can do to contribute. And I, I hope you get well and, and my prayers are for you to heal and, I'm putting it out there. <laughs> so well, take, I know I will care. get better. I'm I'm doing some frequencies through my phone and they seem to help me a lot with my cough because I don't cough as much anymore. Are so but I can't wait for that device. If this helps me through the phone <laughs> and I have it just, you know, a few steps away from me, I can imagine what that device is gonna do if I have it next to me. So I can't wait. That's wonderful. Very good. And I also want to mention you guys, I didn't say this at the beginning, but I'm doing a nine day cleanse for what is it? Heavy metals and for liver and mostly heavy metals is my goal with it because Darlene and Dr. G and um, another doctor tested me that said I was high in aluminum and mercury. So it's like, finally you hear something three times, you have to like be really, really serious. And so I um, am doing a cleanse. I'll tell you more about it another time after I finish, because I don't like to say anything about stuff until I fully tested it, but so far so good. So I'm today's day four and I only have, so, you know, it's nine days and um, super simple. It's actually a nice treat to change things up in my nutrition plan. Because like I said before, we always want to keep our bodies guessing. And when we get into strict of a routine, our bodies are like, Oh, I know what she's going to do now. And so we want to mix things up a little bit. And, um, so far so good. And so I'll report on it next week, but my mom has Alzheimer's dementia and 
I couldn't remember somebody's name the other day and it freaked me out. So I'm like, oh gosh, I'm doing this. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to start having that. And my husband's like, yes, you better do that. <laughs> I don't want you like your mother. <laughs> so I, um, I'll report all the juicy details next week after Dr. Gloria talks about Candida. Right. So if there's no more questions, I just want to thank Darlene for her beautiful presentation and also thank all of you for coming and for Dr. Gloria for helping out. I'm so happy that you're here with us again today and sending love to all of you. And we'll see you tomorrow on our Q&A call. Okay. Make it a beautiful day, you Bye -bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Love you all. Now. Bye. Crazy. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Tracy. Another great show. Thank yes, you. Wonderful. Okay. Bye, you guys.